Good evening, YouTubers. Reloading Bench back with you once again. And this is a, uh, this will be an un, unpackaging. A bag opening, not a box opening. Unbo not an unboxing, an unbagging. And it's kind of a continuation of where I was with the brass prep center from Frankfurt Arsenal. And that I was, as I get older, rethinking my options. So I have a number of ways to trim, uh, from the most basic Lee, uh, either manual, holding it in the stud and doing the wooden ball cutter, to their quick trim, to, gosh, I think I even have, uh, I have some Lyman trim, a hand trimmer, and then I have the pencil sharpener trimmer, I've got this, uh, well, I don't have this, uh, I've got the uh, Lyman Brass Smith. A uh, whole bunch of ways to trim. And uh, I, I like the option of the brass smith because it allows the flexibility across different calibers. But then there's the adjustment pain in the ass. And that's where things like the WFT and similar devices come in where it's set at once and it's always there. So for what I would call high volume, and this would be the highest of volume, for high volume bottleneck I would get a dedicated trimmer and for years I have done just that I would chuck this into the drill it's like it's all set for that chuck this in and I would do it with obviously left-handed bench is a little busy right now I do it left-handed so it's a two two-handed process and for years I did it by hand and then I picked up a uh, pedal so I was doing the uh, the on and off via my foot pedal so the drill wasn't constantly on and uh that's okay it takes you know some wear and tear on the hands because you're constantly you know pushing uh in, in one direction as this is turning and sometimes it grabs and it irritates your hand or whatever then fast forward to you know what i've done recently with the brass prep case prep center with uh you know champ for deburr you know, all in one. So, you know, when you think about how much work is required and everybody's brass prep is it a little bit different for bottleneck. So for me, it would be cleaning. That's step one. Uh, step two would be uh, depriming and full length resizing. Uh, step three would then be another cleaning because full length priming would have all kind of case lube on here. Uh, step four would be trimming. Step five would be uh, potentially cleaning again. Uh, depends. Maybe I blow it out with the, uh, depending on the quantity. Um, step five would be a chamfer. And previously I would put the chamfer or deburr, or I would put the pieces to chamfer deburr in my drill. So each one of those would be a separate step. So you're handling the brass three times for trim, chamfer, deburr. Um, this combines two of those steps into one in terms of brass handling. So you have that piece of brass in your hand, you know, just a second time after trimming to do chamfer deburr. So that takes out, you know, 30% of uh, handling brass. And when you have a lot of brass, that cuts, uh, cuts out some time. So that uh, improves some efficiencies or introduces efficiency. So that's cool. And that got me to thinking because, you know, when I was talking about whether I was going to use this laying down and I was going to push... That got me to thinking about my trimmer, my brass smith trimmer, in that I would mount it, uh, the brass trimmer, uh, the uh, the Lyman Brass Express trim. I, I can't, brass smith express trim, I think that's what it's called. But essentially, you know, the trimmer with a motor. And I'd be pushing, and because I can lock it onto my bench uh, on the T-slot or T-track, it's not going anywhere. But again, I still have that left to right uh, or right to left push depending on where I'm installing it and I'm right-handed so it would be right to left and when I was talking about you know using uh, vertical pressure for the case prep I got to thinking well what if I mounted my um, brass smith case trimmer um, in front of me and then I was pushing uh, push, you know, different level of force 
uh, pushing uh, front to back as opposed to side. I would think it'd be easier, more leverage front to back. You know, I'm guesstimating here. So then I got to thinking, well, if I can do that with the brass Smith, what can I do with the WFT to make that easier? And what I've recently done is moved away from the handheld drill and because I did the restoration on a couple of Craftsman drill presses, I have been chucking this into the drill press at the lowest setting, 600 RPM, and then vertically trimming. And that gets, you know, brass shavings uh, under me, which is, you know, not bad because I put a tray. Um, but it's quicker to have it in the drill press vertically and do that. Uh, still a little bit of challenge with some of the brass in terms of size and uh, ease of use. But again, that's what gloves are for. Uh, or I think you've seen in a previous video, I used the uh, Frankfurt Arsenal uh, primer uh, to lock a piece of brass in, especially for my 5.7 where there's not a lot of brass to grab onto. Uh, and I use that to essentially lock onto the brass and then feed that into the trimmers. So brain started churning. And this is what uh, what I came up with. So this is my brainstorm. What we are going to attempt, let's see, and this just came today, is maybe don't even need my fancy schmancy box cutter. What we're going to try is a modification. Well, look, a bag within a bag. We're going to try a modification for the drill press, akin to what I thought I would be doing with the brass smith. And what this is, and it's probably easier to cut it than it is to anything else. Ooh, this is dirty. This is coming straight up from China. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You know what that says? That says made in China. That's what that says. All right. So, if I played my cards right, hopefully things will fit. But maybe not uh, because of the chuck. I think this chuck is large enough. This is a 3 8 inch chuck. And I think that's large enough. Mm, maybe not. Yeah, we should be okay. Yes. All right. So the idea... What is this? Oh, the chuck. Yet another chuck. My favorite chuck... Uh, I will show you my favorite chuck. I will be right back. And I am back. Manual chuck ratchet chuck with multiple so uh this is for my drill press and it looks like for this small chuck um that'll fit just just nice and you just flick the ratchet to tighten or loosen like this a lot better than dealing with the thumb and the pressure uh, just a personal thing so um what the idea that we're going to do is I would chuck this into the drill press and this is a right angle chuck and then I would lock this in like such. Mm -hmm -hmm. Now you know this is cheap shit, right? Okay, we're gonna see how much we can so the idea would be to chuck always do three that's a tight fit so the idea now hopefully this will work and we will show this working later is to chuck this into the drill and 
and then put a little tray under here and then I'm just pushing some brass pushing some brass in brass 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 in just as I would be with you know the brass smith that would be potentially mounted to uh, the t-track so um, I'm hoping that's a little easier to do because then instead of trying to you know position this correctly underneath the drill press and yeah you know, again it's not that big a deal um, hopefully having it right in front of me is just that much easier and quicker so the next part of this video will be I'm gonna move the drill press over here because it's easier to do that than to get everything out of the way uh, in the mess of a garage I will bring the drill press over here chuck this in and uh, we'll see what we got back shortly well 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 I think we're gonna call this a failure uh, cute idea but uh, the reality of it is uh, probably a no-go and that is because my desire to have a single single hand motion kind of like I do with the case prep by inserting brass uh, depending on where I have this position I have the drill sideways right now just because of the room on the bench but the idea was that this would be running and I would just pop that in and pull that out pop pull as opposed to having this chucked up higher in the drill and then having to do a vertical find it pull it eh, half a dozen one six of another but as you'll see here in a second this is the problem so regardless of how I chuck this I have this I have this rotation so it works uh, let me do it left-handed just so you can see so I can move this wherever I want and then put that in trim it pull it out so technically the idea works but it's now a two-handed solution because where I was holding the drill before either up to meet the brass or powering it on and off which I can now do with a foot pedal uh, I'm still going to be doing a two-handed approach with uh, if I elect to keep this um, so you know one hand again it would be stationary so sorry for the block maybe the idea would be one hand would do again if I keep this one hand would be holding on to uh, the shaft to keep it from rotating the centrifugal force that it wants to rotate uh, clockwise uh, hold it here because it's, you know, it's easy to hold and then just trim so my brass shavings or you know put a tray down or let me let me grab a tray do, 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 do. you know put some kind of tray down or whatever where's this hidden this is hitting right about there so Not sure how I like it and the drill is sideways as I said just because the room on the bench and I'm right-handed obviously I would not be doing this with left hand but because of where the camera's at and the vantage point and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll check the brass first so instead of putting every one of these pieces I would case gauge check the brass and the only pieces I'm trimming are the ones that need trimming again half dozen of one six of another but uh, I'm not really liking this in all honesty so let me go back to uh, the previous method so the previous method would be to just straight up chuck it and then we're back to obviously adjust the 
the height of the table to whatever is convenient so if there's no issues with bumping shit and then just chuck it and I'm gonna end up bleeding yeah I don't know what the fuck I don't know don't know or back to the drill or back to the brass smith and just uh, deal with the settings issues just uh, doesn't cooperate like I would like it to and somebody's gonna complain about the shoulder bump or whatever again maybe left or right is easier than inserting and pulling I don't know don't have a solution but I'm going to say that uh, tonight's activity was a fail. It was a fail. I, not a... Not a... Uh, I'm not liking this. The other thought was... And again, it comes down to how much setup you want to do. The radial arm saw, if you watch that video, has an adapter on the right side. And you can chuck a drill... Uh, you can uh, insert a, a, a drill chuck um, into that insert, screw it in, and then you essentially uh, have a drill bit chuck, a drill chuck rather, uh, that I could do. But again, that's that's just a lot of setup for for this brass, and I don't know if I really want to do all that. So um, I even tried. Uh, a little little thing to try and lock this in so it wouldn't turn and that didn't work I'd have to you know something would have to be fashioned that would essentially couple this in such a way as to prevent it from rotating and obviously the the table uh, using the table you know if, if this was longer maybe but uh, the way uh, the way this hits, uh, well, look at that, I don't know where that happened, don't know where that happened, I don't know if I did that, or we did that, or whatever, there's nothing uh, hard enough to hit this that I'm aware of, unless it hit uh, one of the sides, whatever, uh, methinks that's going back to our rainforest friends. I do not think that is a keeper. So uh, we'll call this a Friday night failure. And uh, I think maybe I need some tea to, uh, to rethink my options here. But yeah, this didn't work. I don't like this. So we're going to scrap this idea. Later.